Dorsha. Today we're dealing with our final mystic that we're studying, Eddie Hillesom. She was Jewish in Amsterdam as World War II raged. So today we're going to learn about her story, her death. We're going to learn about how even in the midst of being Jewish in Amsterdam, being taken to the camps, how she said we should all be willing to be a balm for all wounds. So I invite you to join us today. All are welcome. All are invited and all are wanted here. Our scripture this morning is from Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we all sat down, and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows, there we hung up our harps. For there our captors asked us for songs, and our tormentors asked us for mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forgot you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy, remember me, O Lord. Against the Edomites, the day of Jerusalem's fall, how they said, tear it down, tear it down, down to all its foundations. O oh, daughter Babylon, you devastator, happy shall they be who pay you back what you have done to us. Happy shall they be who take your little ones and dash them against the rock. It is possible to suffer with dignity and without. I mean, most of us in the West don't understand the art of suffering, and experience a thousand fears instead. We cease to be alive, being full of fear, bitterness, hatred, and despair. God knows it's only too easy to understand why. But when we are deprived of our lives, are we really deprived of very much? We have to accept death as part of life, even the most horrible of deaths. And don't we live an entire life, each one of our days? And does it really matter if we live a few days more or less? I am in Poland every day, on the battlefields, if that's what one can call them. I often see visions of poisonous green smoke. I am with the hungry, with the ill-treated, and the dying, every day. But I am also with the jasmine and with that piece of sky beyond my window, there is room for everything in a single life. throughout of the train window on her way to Auschwitz. It was addressed and found by someone and eventually mailed to its intended receiver. She wrote, Father, Mother, and Misha are a few cars away. 
We left the camp singing. We left the camp singing. A song of protest and affirmation of life. They left for the camp singing. The psalm today talks about a people who are being charged to sing, who are being yelled at to sing, who are being forced to sing, who want to them the exiles, those who have been taken from their home in Israel to Babylon. They want them to sing. And the psalmist asked, how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? How can we sing? How can we sing in a foreign land. That psalm goes through all the emotion. It goes through sorrow. It goes through fear. And it goes through anger. Anger that their people have been ripped from their homes and taken somewhere else. Anger where they dream of vengeance. And yet they still sing, how can we sing? How can we sing? How can we remember? And yet Eddie, who's facing a trip that she knows she may never come back from, will most likely not come back from, writes as some of the last words she writes, we left the camp singing. So Eddie comes from a secular Jewish family that didn't practice their faith. And she came from a family that was very dysfunctional with two brothers who were brilliant and yet suffered from various mental illnesses. So that Eddie herself worried about ever having children because she didn't want to pass on that mental illness to her children. So as Eddie lived her life studying, she became a patient, a lover, a friend of this psychologist who was working with her, and yes, hashtag me too. But even in the midst of doing what we would be appalled by, He taught her to think about her life and to lead her life in the present, to think about here and now. And he introduced her to God. He invited her to start keeping a journal, to write down what she was feeling and thinking, to write down what was going on in her life and the world. I mean, one of her entries said, from June 29, 1942, writes, the English radio reported 700,000 Jews perished last year, alone in Germany and the occupied territories. And even if we stay alive, we shall carry the wounds with us throughout our lives. In one way or another, I know it all, and yet I find life beautiful and meaningful from minute to minute. She writes, we should be willing to be, to act as a bomb for all wounds. It's hard to take in what she struggled with. What if, would it be like to be Jewish in Europe as the concentration camps are being built, being set up, and starting to execute people. And that we are now getting the news of those executions, 700,000 dead. What would you do in that moment? How would you respond to that? Where would you go? Who would you be? 7,000, 700,000 dead. Eddie, Right, sometimes it's hard to take in and comprehend, oh God, 
what those created in your likeness do to each other. In those disjointed days, but I no longer shut myself away in my room. I try to look things straight in the face, even the worst crimes. She decided that she was going to look things straight in the face, to face what was in front of her, to face the worst evil you could imagine, to be the one who is the balm for wounds. And so friends and colleagues, acquaintances, tried to get her to leave Amsterdam, to go to safety. But she refused. She said she needed to look straight into the face. Straight into the face. To look suffering in the face. It allowed Eddie to passionately name the falseness of what was happening. It allowed her to speak her truth, to face the falseness she found in herself, the inhumanity that could take hold of any of us, returning hatred for hatred. She invites us to look at life's brokenness, look at the falseness in the face, to act as a bomb for all wounds. So that's why Eddie chose to be taken to Westerbrook, one of the camps that was in the Netherlands. And there, what she did for herself, what she did for those around her, was she felt like it was her job to accompany them, to be with them in the moment that they were knowing to face death that she would stand with them, face the evil of the world, and walk with the wounded. Walk with those who are facing the worst that could come. Because Eddie believed that you needed to stare it straight in the face, but you didn't need to get trapped in the falseness. And she believed that there was beauty also in the world. She writes, this morning, I cycled along the station quay, enjoying the broad sweep of the sky at the edge of a city and breathing in the fresh, unrationed air. And everywhere, signs barring Jew from the path and the open country. But above, above one narrow path still left to us stretches the sky intact. They cannot do anything to us. They really can't. They can harass us. They can rob us of our material goods, of our freedom of movement. But we ourselves forfeit our greatest asset by our misguided compliance, by our feelings of being persecuted, humiliated, oppressed, by our own hatred, by our own swagger, which holds our fear. We may, of course, be sad and depressed by what has been done to us, that is only human and understandable. However, our greatest energy, inner injury is one we afflict upon ourselves. I find life beautiful and I feel free. The sky within me is as wide as the one stretching above my head. I believe in God and believe in man. And I say so without embarrassment. True peace will come only when every individual finds peace within himself. When we all vanquished and transformed our hatred for our fellow human beings of whatever race, even into love one day, although perhaps that is asking too much, it is, however, the only solution. I am a happy person and I hold life dear indeed in the year of our Lord, 1942, the umpteenth year of the war. Eddie teaches us how to look into the face of suffering and how to behave in the face of suffering. I wanted to end our study of the mystics with Eddie because she doesn't hide the pain. She doesn't hide from the horror of the world around her. Instead, she faces it straight on. I think that's important for us right now. How do we face the world that we are living in today? How do we look it straight in the face and argue for what we have been told in scriptures is to be? How do we 
look the world around us in the face and fight for the kingdom that Jesus invited us to be in? How do we look the world in the face when we see around us so many people out of work, so many people struggling to feed their families, so many people in danger of losing their homes, so many people without how do we look them in the face? What do we do? How do we look into the face of what our country has become? Every 80 seconds, every 80 seconds, a person dies from coronavirus here in the United States. Every 80 seconds. How do we look their families in the face? How do we stare into our country and see that suffering, that grieving, that hurt, and that loss? How do we look into their face for every 80 seconds? Every 80 seconds, a person dies of COVID-19 here in the United States. Eddie invites us to look them in the face, to articulate what we are seeing about the mismanagement of this disease, about how we have let something get out of control and take so much life when we could have controlled it. We could have taken the right steps. We could have done what was necessary. We could have had a plan. She invites us to be real, to face it, to see it, but not to get trapped in it. She believes in fighting and overcoming what it is, to transform the evil into the love that God has shared with the world. She reminds us that even if we personally are the ones suffering, if we are the ones who have been captured by the police like just happened in Oregon, in a small town in the middle of nowhere where ice came and grabbed two men and people gathered to surround the bus to see them but had no hope when armed people come and take them away. She invites us to look in the face of our racism, the way we have seen people as not belonging, where we have defined people of color, whether they are black or brown, and have said that they are other, they're not us. Especially if those black or brown people happen to be gay, we want to ignore and push aside the killing of trans people in this country daily, constantly. We want to push it aside and ignore it and say, well, that's not me. And yet if we are to be a balm for all wounds, we have to see the reality. We have to see who we have become, the people that we have become, the country that we have let happen. And we need to speak out. We need to start saying that this is wrong and this is evil. And in order to keep our ability to face the evil, Eddie teaches us that we need to have beauty breaks. Moments when we acknowledge that God has created the most wonderful, abundant, beautiful place for us to live. We need to have those moments when we stop and listen to the birds sing, when we stop and wonder at the beauty of a butterfly, where we stop and breathe in the fragrance of a flower, where we stop and savor that meal that we prepared. We need moments where we stop and refresh and renew ourselves in beauty so that we can then 
Look again at the brokenness, the falseness, the evil, and face it. Amen. Eddie says these words about praying, about kneeling to pray. Last night, shortly before going to bed, I suddenly went down on my knees in the middle of this large room, between the steel chairs and the matting, almost automatically. Some time ago, I said to myself, I'm a kneeler in training. Sometimes in moments of deep gratitude, kneeling down becomes an overwhelming urge head deeply bowed, hands before my face. If you are able, I invite you to kneel down. I invite you to kneel down and bow your head. I invite you to kneel before the Lord. And think of our prayer words today. We should be willing to act as a balm for all wounds a balm for all wounds. Holy One, as Eddie said, we should be willing to act as a balm for all wounds. Make us a balm for all wounds. For those who are wounded with illness, disease, cancer, stroke, heart condition, make us a balm for all wounds. For the wounds caused by racism, the daily indignities, the, the systemic dis discrimination, the wounds too deep to touch, Make us a balm for all wounds. For the wounds we have from fear of the unknown, for our worries over what will happen to children and young adults as they head off to school in this time of uncertainty and fear. Make us a balm for all wounds. For those wounds so deep inside us from the hurt we received as children, for the abuse we may have suffered, for the bullying we have a hard time forgetting. Make us a balm for all wounds. For those right now in the midst of natural disasters, where flooding is out of control in so many parts of the world, where forest fires are raging, make us a balm for all wounds. For the wounds that come when you lose your job, even though you know the economy is a mess, even though you know it's not your fault, that wound that comes when you lose your job, make us a balm for all wounds. Make us a balm for all wounds, O oh Lord. Lead us this week to the people and places where we can be a balm for someone else's wounds. 
as we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Eddie wrote, as life becomes harder and more threatening, it also becomes richer because the fewer expectations we have, the more good things of life become unexpected gifts that we accept with gratitude. I invite you to show your gratitude by sharing your gifts with our ministry. You can do so by visiting stpaulshinkley.org. Let us pray. God bless the unexpected gifts we have received today in the form of a flower blooming, a child laughing, a piece of chocolate. Help us to show our gratitude by sharing our gifts with you and our church. Amen. I close today with one of Eddie's prayers. Oh God, times are too hard for frail people like myself. I know that a new and kinder day will come. I would so much like to live on, if only to express all the love I carry within me. And there's only one way of preparing the new age, by living it even now in our hearts. Somewhere in me I feel so light, without the least bitterness, so full of strength and love, I would so much like to help prepare the new age. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember, God loves you and always will. Jesus loves you and always will. I love you and always will. May you bind up all the wounds. May you find those moments of beauty and peace May you step forward and step out when you know you must take a stand. Amen. Mm -hmm.